Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, for this video, I just thought I'd do something a little bit different. I thought I'd just uh, do something other than a Transformers review just for a change of pace. As you can see, uh, I have five uh, Voltron lines here. Uh, now, I'm not sure exactly when this set was released. I know it was quite some time ago. Uh, I think the early 2000s is when this was put out. Uh, because this is was from... Um, they tried to do a revival of Voltron called Voltron 3D. I never watched it, but, you know, I remember the toys uh, from, you know, way back in the 80s. Um, but, and to be completely honest with you, I don't remember much about the show in general. Um, I haven't seen it probably for close to 30 years now, so I don't remember a whole lot of the storyline. Uh, the only thing I really remember... Were, there were five lions that formed Voltron, and uh, I think they needed a key to activate the lions, something like that. I, you know, the tagline was Voltron, Defender of the Universe. Unfortunately, beyond that, I don't remember much else. Um, I would say these guys uh, obviously were the main inspiration for the Power Rangers that came, you know, maybe about ten years after these guys did. Anyway, uh, I'll go ahead and just show off the lions one by one. And we'll start out with number five here, Yellow Lion. And as you can see, uh, it's fairly well molded. Um, now I know this is not the most detailed Voltron set out of all of them. There's a ton of them out there that you can get. A huge range of prices, huge range of sizes, uh, posability, etc. I know there's a very large variety of these things that, that have been put out on, on the market over the years. Anyway, uh, he's got several points of articulation. His, uh, his mouth can open. And it can open kind of all the way down. It can uh, his head can move up and down. He of course does have a little pilot inside his head, and I'll take him out just so you can so I can scale him next to the figure since this is supposed to be like a human size compared to these things. So, and uh, he's got some articulation, some pretty you know decent amount for a toy like this. Um, besides the head and the jaws. His legs, he uh, can move the top of the leg, bend at the knee, and he can uh, bend at the foot, and his tail can move. And that's pretty much it. Now, he does have um, a feature on him. Actually, all of what I would call the torso lions do. They can all roll if you kind of put their uh, legs up kind of like this. Because you can see those wheels he's got. And... It's one of those, uh, it's one of those deals, you know, you pull it back, and he rolls. Oh, and there's also a uh, missile launcher here, but I'm gotta, I've got to be honest, it's been so long, I can't actually remember, uh, figure out how to get it to, to shoot. It, I think it does, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, oh, you gotta just press on the back and it'll shoot. Yeah, well, there's a button. Let's see if that works. Oh, it does, apparently. There's a little button up there and it's spring loaded and it shoots. So I'll go ahead and just get this guy ready to uh, kind of link up with the rest of uh, Voltron. Kind of just put him down there and. Uh, now we got the blue lion. Obviously, he's pretty much the same as the yellow lion since he's the other leg piece. Uh, same articulation and gimmicks. Just obviously a different mold. I think he looks pretty good. You know, I, I think all of these uh, pieces look fairly good in this set. And uh, that's pretty much going to wrap up the blue lion. So I'll just go ahead and get him kind of folded up into leg mode. And I'll now head off to number two, uh, the red lion. 
they don't have proper tails molded on the arm pieces don't have proper tails molded onto them like the legs and the center one does um, but you know it'll this piece this is actually of course used to attach is the arm it will move up and down it kind of serves as a tail um, doesn't have any um, jaw articulation on this guy it's just a molded piece and his head doesn't move up and down but for some well, for some reason the head will shoot out I don't know why they designed it that way but it will obviously the pilot lives in that little area there and uh, he's got wheels too but he doesn't actually uh, roll or I'm, I'm sorry he rolls but he doesn't have the pull back and uh, release roll that the uh, legs do but they will roll obviously and uh, we kinda just have the same thing you know the oops number three the green lion same deal as the red pretty much now he does have a different molded top door canopy than the red one does but you know not bad I'll just go ahead and fold him up Now, obviously, in a lion mode, the black lion, number one, actually has the most going on, of course. And that's pretty typical for pretty much any Voltron set. Uh, he's got the articulated tail. Uh, if you want, you can deploy his wings in this mode. And, uh, you know, give it, you know, make him a flying lion. That doesn't look bad. That actually looks kind of cool. His missile shoots out his back here. And uh, he's got, you know, some points of articulation on him here at the top of the leg. Bends at the knee. Moves at the foot there. And pretty much the same thing on his front legs at the top, knee, foot. Uh, his mouth can open, but of course that's Voltron's head. And uh, it can kind of look down too. It's pretty neat. I mean, you can get him in some, some poses, but... You know, and that's pretty much it for these guys' individual line modes. I'm going to go ahead and uh, combine them into Voltron now. Let's just go ahead and get this guy ready. Not too much to it. They're generally pretty simple uh, on most Voltron sets I've seen. It's pretty simple to get them into uh, combined. It's certainly, they certainly have much simpler transformations than um, the maj vast majority of uh, Transformers. Um... But it's still nice that they have, uh, I mean, it's still a cool, unique gimmick, I think, uh, that they did on this show so very long ago. It's, it's, you know, I mean, yes, there are Transformer combiners, but I think Voltron was on the air doing that before, G or G1. I'm not sure if it was around exactly the same time, or who got the idea from whom, or what, but still kind of neat. Anyway, there is one other little point on this guy. You pull his chest down, and you see the only uh, pilot's name I remember, Keith, right in there. I think that's where the key went on the show, though. I'm not sure. Anyway, you just put his limbs on him now, since he's ready to go. And let me go ahead, I'm going to have to aim the camera up here. This is quite a tall figure. Just bear with me here, guys. Sorry for the shaky cam. And there we have, <laughs> he's really tall. And there we have Voltron uh, kind of all combined and into his, uh, you know, all five of his lions there combined and 
he's ready to uh, ready to go. I'll go ahead and give you a 360 of them. De pretty good looking figure, honestly. Uh, I think you know this is not a bad set of them. Um, now the reason I still got this uh, little pilot here, which I guess would be typical human size. <laughs> And if he is in scale, um, let me just kind of prop him up there. And uh, let me zoom in because he's going to be hard to see. If this is accurate, I don't remember to the cartoon, but if that's the size that a human would be compared to Voltron, that just shows you how giant uh, Voltron would have been, you know, in the cartoon. I'm not sure. Like I said, it's been a really long time since I saw the cartoon. So I don't know how big Voltron was supposed to be, but, you know, uh, like I said, if that is accurate, then uh, Voltron's about as tall as maybe a 10 or 15 story building. So, anyway, uh, let me go ahead and uh, put his weapons in his hands. He comes with uh, his shield. And he comes with a sword. And uh, as you can see, they're chrome. They they look pretty good. They have, you know, as old as these are, they still have managed to not become tarnished or anything over the years. There is some slight plastic yellowing uh, around Voltron's face because, again, this is a really old toy. Like I said, I'm not I'm not sure when I got it, but it was a really long time ago. And uh, as far as articulation goes, he doesn't have a whole lot. Um, his head can bend up a little, you know, can look up and down, can rotate at the shoulder, can stretch out, uh, bend out at the shoulder. There's no elbow anything going on as far as his legs go. Go forward and back, and you can pivot his feet down a little bit, and that's pretty much it. Pretty much it. I mean, you can adjust his wings, but that doesn't really count as articulation to me because it's not like you know, limb movement. And uh, just for a comparison shot with a toy you may own, just so you get an idea of the size of this guy, put him next here to MP10. And as you can see, he's actually taller than uh, MP10. So he's a pretty tall toy, no doubt about it. Um, that's pretty much going to wrap this whole thing up. Um, if you can find a Voltron set for a decent price on the secondary market or... I. I don't know if they're sell the only one that I knew of that they were selling new recently was the Matty Collector one, and that was going for like three hundred dollars. That's pretty pricey. If you're a hardcore Voltron fanatic, it might be worth it because I, from what I understand, that thing's about as tall as uh, Fort Max, about two feet tall. Uh, like I said, if you're hardcore into Voltron. Maybe that's worth getting personally. I wouldn't drop $300 on a Voltron toy, so get whichever one you like. Um, thanks for watching, and have a good day.